Hello everyone. I'm going to take you through my vision of a sword adapted from a piece of axle shaft. This is a piece of axle. It's a 4140 chromoly steel. And I'm going to turn it into a sword. There's enough material here. I'm going to reutilize some of that splined area as the handle. There's a couple of holes uh, drilled uh, already existing in this shaft for me to forge it out I have to uh, plug these holes so I machine here my lathe a little pin it's a press fit I press fit it into the shaft seal that up and then uh, that's pressed in and sealed that'll forge out and then the end has a little cavity in it and so I put in a little bit of metal powder here and I drop in these bearings from my roller bearing and they're perfect bearing is just a perfect fit just drops in and I use a little bit of metal powder here and drop in a uh, bearing and some metal powder now this is a little problematic uh, these threads I, I end up having to, to discard the, the, the tip of this once it was drawn out because I had some inclusions and some areas on, that didn't quite forge because of uh, these threads on the end of the shaft. But So I, I weld the end shut and that's all sealed up and then uh, the pin is pressed in place. So here I am, get it up to heat and I'm going to be forging it out. You see I'm, I'm retaining that splined handle. I want that splined handle, handle to be part of the grip and so I'll be making some other uh, uh, a little grip extension out of some tubing. You'll see later on I have a pommel I make out of aluminum. But here I'm drawing out the blade. And there's actually was a surprising amount of material in this shaft. I draw it in, I think I'm about 5 16 thick is what I want to draw this out. Just because of the imperfections of the drawing process, I want enough material to grind down and have a and have a thick enough blade. Now, 4140 is not an ideal uh, steel for for a, a knife, but it's a very tough steel. Uh, you can't usually get high enough hardness. You can get mid, like 45, maybe uh, to 48 on the on the Rockwell C scale, uh, which is a hard a scale of hardness. Uh, and you can get a little uh, a little. Uh, higher than that maybe on the hardness but what we're 4140 uh, it doesn't get as hard but you can temper it and and get a very tough uh, material so that's kind of what I, I'm going for here you can see this blade is going to be a very kind of tough uh, very stout uh, blade and I wanted it to actually be longer because technically this is a, a sword and I kind of fell into the minimal length I wanted just because I had some inclusions on the end there where those threads are. You'll find this problematic. I probably should have ground those threads down before I forged this out. Uh, I probably wouldn't have lost the, the end of that, the, the material on the end there. So uh, here I am. I'm on my second heat. You can see I'm already getting quite a bit of length. I'm on my drawing dies here. I'm drawing this out. Now I'm able to indu induce a little bit of curve in this blade by actually angling, instead of feeding it straight into my drawing dies, I feed it at a little bit of an angle, uh, which is hard to see from this shot, but it, I'm inducing a little bit of a curve. You might see it as I rotate uh, the blade out here, but I, I want that to be curved. This is gonna have, you know, it won't be, a, you know, a period correct katana kind of curve, but I do want this to be curved. And, uh, you know, ultimately this blade was supposed to be longer. But, um, and you can see some of the problems already with the threads on the end. I should have just ground those out and that material would have, uh, would have drawn out nicely. But, but those, those ridges in the, in the, those threads, if they don't get drawn out properly, they get folded in on each other. Uh, and there's some scale trapped in there. I could have used flux, guys. I could have really heavily fluxed up the end uh, and, and got it to a little bit of a hotter temp. Um, but you don't have to get a high... When you're just forging, you don't need to have that high of a temp. And if you're forge welding, 
uh, you're going to be in the higher temps. But here, this is a different angle here. I'm drawing these. I'm drawing. I have the width I want on the sword. I have enough thickness for me to grind down. Uh, and something that won't warp horribly in the heat treat, too. And so I switch the flat dies here, kind of draw it out. Now, I do some hand shaping here, um, uh, just with my little DIY anvil. Um, and it does okay. This little anvil is a piece of railroad track. It does okay. It's not as good as, you know, a bona fide anvil. But um, for what I'm doing, uh, it works. It works well. So I'm working on my little hand skills here, trying to refine that, that taper on the end and, and get a little bit more of the curve that I'm looking for and getting that uh, refined and straightening it out. So this is pretty much it. Now I had to cut like the last four inches of this off, five inches. Um, you can see everything looks great and right on the end it just gets a little. So here it is. I've cut that end. I've trimmed it. I've removed that area where the where the uh, threads were kind of folded in on each other. So this is it, just a rough grind to remove the scale on it. Now, I'm gonna go directly to heat treat now. So, so I'm gonna heat treat this. I'm dipping in at Parks 50. Uh, and you, you need a pretty fast oil to quench 4140. You can actually quench 4140 in, in water. Um, water can be problematic though. There can be some cracking that can happen when you're when you use water quench. But uh, so after my heat treat, <clears throat> I did a thermal cycle of 300 degrees, known as a temper, and then I'm uh, doing a grind. Now I'm refining the profile, the bevel. Uh, I'm getting these sides um, uh, very consistent, and so I'm wearing my proper PPE. Uh, for this, uh, what I'm doing here, you can't, this dust can be really bad to inhale, but you can see here, I'm just refining it, and you could tell, when I was grinding this, I could tell the heat treat was very effective, um, I, my heat, my hardness files showed a mid 40s, like a 45 to 46, uh, on the C scale for hardness, um, that was after, after temper. Uh, so here I am. This is a piece of 4130 chromoly tubing, one and one eighth of an inch in outside diameter, and then, and then the wall thickness is 0.125 inches, an eighth of an inch. So I'm doing a knurling operation. This is a knurling. It produces a diamond type of texturing. You can see here I got a close up. This is excellent for a grip. It's a very uh, a very good uh, texture for a grip. Now here I am, this is this segment is called Parkerizing in Your Pajamas. That's what I call it. And if you haven't Parkerized in your pajamas, uh, I highly recommend it. It's very rewarding. It's very relaxing. You get up on a, you know, on a Sunday, you heat up your Parkerizing tank. Don't even bother changing, just stay in your pajamas. So, but here I am Parkerizing this handle to produce a really, uh, a nice dark black. Uh, it's more of a grayish. But you can see here how dark it's getting. It's nice and dark. And that's going to slide over uh, this uh, round portion. So here I am welding uh, a piece of all thread to the handle. This is one half by 13 threads per inch. Now I'm going to put the handle on there and check to make sure that rod is centered. And then uh, I'm going to finish welding here. Now there's going to be a pommel is what I call it, a pommel that's going to be made out of aluminum that's going to be threaded that will thread on and tension that grip in place and so i'm going to leave that bare aluminum i'll polish it a little bit but i think i'm just going to leave it bare aluminum so here i'm making this part now i have a chunk of of uh, inch and a half diameter aluminum and i'm making sure the end is just a slip fit inside that tube and so now i'm going to center drill on this uh, do I get enough chip uh, chip depth and then I'm gonna run uh, a 15 30 seconds uh, drill and then uh, then I'm gonna tap this half by 13 so here I am I've uh, center drilled I've drilled and I'm tapping uh, this 
getting this tapped here. Now I'm making sure the depth of the threads is, and when I drilled this hole I wasn't beyond the extent of the part. I want that pommel to be, I don't want to see a hole going through it. So I cut this part off on my bandsaw and I screw it onto a piece of all thread, half by 13 threads per inch. I chuck this back up on my lathe. Now I can profile this. Now I'm going to round these corners. I'm going to cut some grooves evenly spaced across this and I'm going to polish it and that'll be done. Now this is a different part guys. This isn't aluminum. This is steel. Now this is going to be part of the hilt. Now, or I think you'd call it a hilt. This is going to weld to my Suba. Suba is a little plate uh, that I'm going to make out of Damascus from chain. Now, I wanted to make the Suba something special. So I got some chain out. And you can see here I have uh, some steel tubing. I welded an end cap on. I painted in the inside with white paint. It contains titanium dioxide. And I have these layers of chain. I'm just going to stack these chain layers. And then I fill it with metal powder contains 4% nickel and it's uh, I get it from Jans. Now that gets welded shut. I weld a handle on it. I won't go too far deep into this, but this is how I make chain Damascus. I, I stack the chain inside a square tube. I weld the end cap on it, weld a handle, and then I draw this out. Now this is at forge welding temps. So my temps are higher on this. Uh, I got up to around 2250, I think, or 2300. Uh, I had some video showing uh, my uh, digital readout on my furnace, but it's not in this video. But I think I got a 2350, somewhere around there. And I draw this out. And so all this chain is going to get heated and drawn out. And then uh, I'm going to extract it from this can. Now, the, the titanium dioxide paint makes it very easy to extract from this can. And you're going to see here, I pull this out. And uh, this is the can I'm looking at here. This is the billet extracted from that can. And so this is all that chain drawn out. Now I'm just going to do an end cut off of this. I'm just going to cut a chunk off the end. And here's my Suba design. It's kind of a squarish with a little rounded sides. That's going to be my, my Suba, my hand guard. So after that's done, now this is a quick dip in after I've cut this chunk off the end, I do a quick dip in the uh, acid, my ferric chloride. And look at this pattern, guys. It came out really cool. Now this pattern is going to be drawn out. I'm going to, I'm going to flatten this piece out. You'll see here, I got it under my press and I'm flattening this out of my die. So I get this back up to a pretty good temp and I'm flattening that out. I'm on my drawing dies, so I'll draw it down, rotate it, draw it again. I'm trying to make this flat. I'm turning this into a flat disc. And I just need a little bit more material than what uh, my little cardboard pattern. And here I am drawing this out. Flattening it out. And I just get it close. I think I shot for a quarter inch in thickness. I was a little bit, give me some room to grind it down. So here's the finish guard, or Suba as it's known. And it's been profiled and ground. Now I'm going to weld it to that piece of steel you saw in your machining. And that's going to actually have it. I have some holes drilled in this collar. And it's going to attach to uh, the, the actual handle of the sword. And so I'm actually going to drill and tap into the handle itself. So I threaded this 1032. Uh, 1032 is the thread. And I threaded this on both sides. And so the collar of this will actually slide up and bolt to it. Now here I'm dipping this. This is the first shot of this flattened out chain Damascus. And I love this pattern. 
this pattern is like one of my favorites. It, it's just kind of like a, there's a little bit of order to it. It's a little chaotic. It's almost, you know, it, it's a little random. And I just love this chain look. I love it. It's one of my favorites. And this is just a quick dip in the fair chloride. Now onto the blade. Now I finished ground this blade. I put an edge on this. This thing is, it, this thing is insanely sharp. Now I'm putting a bluing compound on here. Now it's not going to be uniform. This is intentional. I want kind of a color case hardened look on this blade without going to the trouble of actually doing a case hardened, hardening on the blade. Uh, so I use a, a product sold by Brownells. It's called Oxfo Blue. It's a cold bluing compound and you just rub it on. Now there's a way to actually do it to make it uniform. And so I'm intentionally uh, putting some variegation into this, guys. I'm kind of rubbing some areas, and I'm doing it in sections instead of trying to do the whole thing. And I'm I'm getting some golds, some blues, some purples. I want I want this variegation in color. This is actually what I'm trying to achieve. So here you can see this blade came out absolutely stunningly beautiful. Uh, these blues and purples, it's almost like an iridescent kind of look uh, in the steel. Um, and I, I probably should have maybe included some cutting uh, some cutting uh, shots in this video. This thing is crazy sharp. Um, just handling it, you have to be careful. This came out very sharp. But here you see me, uh, I got the, the guard or the suba on. I'm running these 1032... Uh, cap head machine screws to hold it on and this is a very tight fit up this is the the, the the slip fit of these on is very tight and you can see the the chain damascus on the pommel or on the uh, on the suba and I left those splines kind of kind of rough finished I didn't really do much on those splines I kind of wanted to be honest with you guys this gives me a lightsaber feel I get kind of a lightsaber vibe. Um, here's my the knurled, the diamond textured uh, tube that was parkerized. Um, it's a very tight fit up. And here is my pommel. This is out of aluminum. It's been polished. You can see kind of the ridges I machined in it. This locks up very tight. And the handle, I, I, I almost debated making the handle smaller. And I don't know if I, you know, I kind of deviated from some traditional proportions. But I really love the balance. It balances very well. Uh, it is it is crazy sharp. And I love the look of this blade. I love the iridescent finish on the blade. I love the detail of the chain Damascus in the, in the Suba. I like kind of the industrial kind of look to the handle. Almost like a lightsaber would kind of look on the handle. Um you know, you have some horizontal lines there in that, in that little collar, the vertical striations of the splines. Uh, I like the raw look of the aluminum. Let me know what you guys think. Is this too, is it too gaudy? Is it too much? Did I put too much color into it? Did I, I don't know. But this is kind of the direction I went. And I loved this sword. It's extremely functional and very durable. Uh, this is not just a piece of, uh, you know, artwork that you'd hang on a wall. This thing is a, a dangerous, a very, you know, functional blade. I, I want to get you some shots here in the sun. Look at this. The finish on this blade came out like a like a highly uh, polished, iridescent look. And I think I got the dimensions. Maybe the Suba is a little bit too big. I'm not sure. To be honest with you, I haven't made a lot of swords, but I really love this one. I love the feel of it. I love the look of it. Let me guys, uh, tell me what you guys think. Uh, what you think about it. Stay safe out there and I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you.